from the podcast, Grant's Rants Hollywood Talk. It's Grant's Rants Small Talk. Real Housewives of New York City Rundown. Let the ranting begin. I am joined by my friend, Catherine Jones, calling in from New York. Welcome back to the podcast. Hello, Grant. Um, Thank you for having me. Thank you. It's a nice reprieve here. Yes. Um, Look, I've had reviews. People have noticed the show has not been published. Um, It hasn't been my time to speak. Um, I felt this before most people. I just didn't think it was appropriate. So I took some time off, um, and I still may. Who knows what's happening? But um, Catherine and I are going to be talking about Real Housewives of New York for two episodes. Yes. That's what we're doing today. So I hope that you find this to be a reprieve, an escape, something positive, and if anything, something to tune into, to tune out of everything else for just a few minutes. So, yes. and Go ahead. As I always say, in these uncertain times, these sad times, we can always count on the women of New York to be intoxicated, which <laughs> seems to be a theme of the season. Yeah, I mean, exclusively. Uh, yeah. So this, this, these two episodes that we're covering here uh, may or may not be 30 minutes or less. Um, we're recording these, so you you know, the people who have downloaded this, you know how long they run. So I just figured, like, why not? Let's just talk. Let's just talk. Not worry about being on the clock. And let's just talk. So let's get into it with season 12, episode nine, Hurricane Leah taking place in my home state of Rhode Island. Um, Catherine, have you been to Newport? Yes. So I was actually thinking of you because I grew up partially in North Carolina, but then I also grew up in Connecticut. So Rhode Island is like where you go in the summer. Mm -hmm. So I've spent many a day there. Um, I wish I had as much I don't know if I would call it fun, but I Newport would have been better if I was with them, I think. But yes. so I so I was excited to speak to you knowing you're from Rhode Island because I know like you know Newport, we've been there. So it's, Yeah, I mean I've never had a wild time there because I usually go with me my either. parents, you know, like I've I, never been there before. Like I've I was always underage. So Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, whenever I go home for the summer, I like, which now I don't know if I will, who knows, but whenever <laughs> I do, my dad's always like, you know, there's like a lot of like bars and clubs in Newport, and like, I'm like, what am I going to do, go by myself? Like, I know that they have like a really good scene, so like, at least during like the three months that the actual town is available to like, you know, partake in, but um, my dad works in the Newport mansion, so I'm very familiar oh, with that. Oh, that's them. great. That's so cool. Yeah. So like, you know, that's a good thing. I enjoy it. These ladies, however, um, set it up real high. They were like, yeah, oh, this is very exclusive. Tinsley's mother has a house there. I mean, this they're just making this seem like, you know, the top, top place to be seen next to Palm Beach. I never viewed it that way. <laughs> yeah. They also went off season. Yes, which and is places, not the same. Yeah, places in especially New England are very seasonal. So Ramona getting some discount hotel room or God <laughs> knows what she did. Like, it, it's not Palm Beach. I mean, Newport is very exclusive and beautiful. But like, I, I don't know why they were acting as if they were going to some private anywhere, island like anywhere yeah I, anywhere yeah <laughs> like yeah it was just strange to me because like yeah in peak months obviously are the summer months and it, it looks to me like they're there in october uh I yes d- definitely I, in know, the fall yeah I, bet. I mean I, I don't know if i would flock to a beachside resort in october or an island but they did um what else can we say before they even get there though they um all have to gather at ramona's high rise apartment oh, God. and uh tinsley has a pillow with her and luann calls her a baby and strokes her chin this is so demeaning i'm sorry but i am team I, tinsley grant it's so funny that you're mentioning that because i actually in my notes that i took i wrote pillow gate lou <laughs> versus tins i'm team tins because i'm sorry my mother is the most low maintenance person ever and she'll bring her pillow places because she has severe allergies. So Luann, they just all gang up on Tinsley. It's yeah. just so crazy. I actually had to stay in a hotel recently because I was displaced from the riots and all this stuff. 
willingly, but still. And I forget that when you go to these hotels, they give you those down pillows that flat yeah. out in two seconds. I don't like a down pillow. So no, I, I, sh- I should have been like Tinsley and brought my own. Yeah. No. And now we know. We learn. You, you yep. never know where you're going to learn. Ne- well, you truly um, never know. And then my, another note I took before they went to Newport is that Sonia has a new intern. Yes. Matthew was his name, I believe. (laughs) Yes. And she was talking about her thermos. I don't even know what those are. Um, And then I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Um, And then she had a bathing suit made that said sisters. Sisterhood. And yes. And I was a little confused because I didn't know where she thought she was going because you're not dipping in the ocean. I don't know why they the, all packed a bathing suit. Yeah, like they were wearing <laughs> winter coats. It was ridiculous. Yeah, I don't know why they all packed a bathing suit. It seemed quite odd to me, especially because we didn't, at least we didn't see or in the course of these two episodes, them really spending any time collectively on the beach. I know Dorinda went out in the morning, which we'll get to, but like, <laughs> I, I don't know why. And I want to know, like, really, what do these interns do for Sonia? We've seen a dozen of them at this point. What are they doing? I, I, I don't know. I and that, that is, that's a New York Times magazine piece I want to read because yeah, they need well, to look into that. You know, some internships come with credits, like three credits, four credits. Who is giving credits for that? Right. Like, Jeez. I mean, how you many, know, are you getting like a half? Because they can, you can get like a half a credit for certain things. Like, what do you, how do you justify a credit for an internship in Sonia Morgan's daughter's apartment? <laughs> No, literally though. I, I don't get it. At one point, it. she had like an army of them. Right, they were on computers. We like, had, so yeah, like... we had computer number one, computer <laughs> number three. Like, I, I'm so I'll never confused. know. But you know what? I mean, any way you can get free labor, Sonia is going to figure it out. Yeah, and you know, I mean, there's, she, there's always a new gay. I'll just say it. There's always a new gay. Yeah. I, they they just they can't help themselves from being there. Um, she's, she finds her way no matter what that one, as she's one of those who just floats through life, you know, totally. she, she has a pretty good life considering how clueless she is. And I like Sonya, I know. but I mean, it's not like she's I someone like that's like, too. I can't say she like has like a plan for life and is like methodical and thought out. And, oh no, you know, I mean, definitely not. she shows up. Yeah. Sometimes Sonia, I was actually thinking about this today. You wish you, not that I would trade my life with her, but I'm like, God, what is Sonyaville like? Like, does she know, like, she's so unaware of surroundings, so living in the past. And I think that would be like a nice reprieve for like two days. I don't want to swap brains with her, but I I would try it out. I sometimes look at Callie, my dog, (laughs) and feel that way. I'm like, can I just like not feel anything for a little bit and just kind of enjoy the routine? Yeah. I mean, you know, she's definitely privileged. Good for her. I I wish, uh, you know, the rest of us in the real world are, you know, I mean, I had a, I had a, I'm not gonna lie to you. I had a full glass, a full margarita before this. Oh my God. I'm jealous. I should do that. I was, I I need it, especially to get into all of this because, um, you know, there's so much in this episode. I was like, I need to loosen up because I've been working nonstop. Yeah. Um, Elise plays this game. Oh, go ahead. Oh God, Elise. Yeah, no, go the vulnerability or what yeah. Was what it? are you most humble? Your most humbling <laughs> moment? Like this is so fake. Who plays these types of games? I've never heard of something like this. I play like I Spy or like you know like let's you know put a good like set, like playlist on shuffle. But, like I don't need to get into people's yeah. vulnerable moments. Or also like maybe take a page from Luann, play Mary Kill. Right. I mean, that's all she's talking about. That's her whole storyline, by the way, this season. Oh, my God. Once again, the cabaret is all that Lu- Luann has to bring to the show. Um, but Elise talks about how her most humbling moment was this really hot girl was getting catcalled by construction guys, and it wasn't her. I mean, if imagine if that was your biggest problem. <laughs> I wish. I literally wish. <laughs> I mean, for real. Leah has to talk about this guy, Peter Chip, who she alleges that he's gay, which is like way too much. She's going way too far. During this, Ramona is taking a phone call, a full-blown phone call. We have no context for this call, but so rude. What else would we expect, though? She is just, 
honestly, Ramona is kind of a breath of fresh on this season, which is very scary. It makes me sad for my city. People are hating on Ramona more than ever. They're asking for her removal, um, especially in the political climate we're in. Um, yeah. You know, I, I just don't know. I mean, I... I enjoy watching her on the show. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Me too. She says, I, I just enjoy watching as her. She, as she, in all sincerity, I love watching her on the show. I don't as she really need everyone to be completely politically correct because it's just not an accurate representation. You know? She's also, flawed. We, we have to go. We have to meet. Not that we have to meet them where they are. That's not the right thing to say, but we can only expect so much from these women. And if we're in a climate where we're all kind of like growing and learning, like we have to expect them allegedly to be a few steps behind. Right. I mean, look, I've said it before on Grant's friends, maybe even on after buzz, like we can't look to these women to be the moral authority. They're not hired to be, you know, civil rights leaders and figures unfortunately it's great it's great if they're forward thinking and they can use this platform for good that's a fan- like someone like bethany frankel um you know that'd be a bonus but i mean it's just not something we can count on there it's, it's just i don't know what else to say other than it you can't expect it so especially from someone yeah. like ramona sorry yeah she's uh, she's just ramona So Leah wants to invite her sister, who has a seven-month-old baby, and immediately everyone's like, oh, seven months? No, no, no. I guess they thought the baby was going to come with them, which I thought so, too. Yeah, no, I thought thought that was funny. I thought she was going to try to bring this, like, infant along with her to Rhode Island in a hotel room. But I'm glad that that wasn't it. They are not a child-friendly crew, so. No. Ramona is instantly offended by this. The driver of this this bus is furious. They cut to the guy three times. Why did this poor guy have to have a camera on him? It's bad enough that he had to drive these women three and a half hours to Newport. They go the to poor the poor guy. They go to the Castle Hill Inn, and Ramona walks in. She's flirting with the valet. They join Dorinda. You might think they've never stepped foot in a boutique hotel before. I know. Ugh. Ramona agrees that Leah's sister can come to dinner tomorrow night. Um, and then they come up with the whole thing with Elise. Well, you know, Ramona knows Elise, but she doesn't know Leah's sister. Well, Leah doesn't know Elise. Leah knows her own sister, though. So what's the difference? Yeah, exactly. Immediately, she says that uh, she says no. And everybody but Sonia agrees. And then... Um, she finally has to accept that the the sister can come. It changes so many times, but I, I, I did write it down just to maintain the order. Um, they make a comment about the sea air <laughs> that, that does have a nice smell to it, but I've never gotten like porn vibes from the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> no, me either. I mean, they're like treating it as an aphrodisiac. <laughs> yes, it's like Ramona with the oysters. It's Sonia with the Atlantic. Right. Sonia fires up Ramona, who gets a plus one, she's asking, and then Ramona immediately jumps to the worst conclusion possible. The dynamic will not be good. Well, where are you getting your information from? What evidence do you have that this person, who you, whom you've never met, is going to change up the dynamic and make it toxic? And why do you suddenly care about that? Yeah, and also maybe she would have reeled her sister in a bit. Well, like, we see Leah, she's totally out of breath, and another podcast alleged that she was probably on something. She's drinking, yes, and they showed the clip of her dancing, but what, what's the story with her? She, you know, she shows up, this is before they arrive to the actual dinner, and she's already, like, on one for sure. Yes, and, okay, so I think, because I know, can we go a little, do you mind if I go a little, like, separate from the episode yeah, just that's something fine. i um i actually was looking at leah's sister's instagram a couple weeks ago before she even appeared on the show and from i i did some deep stalking it's the quarantine i don't have enough things to do but she had attended watch what happens live 2 years ago and i i i think they want to be on the show i think Allegedly, I, I I think that they are very aware of what this show can bring, mm-hmm. and I I think Leah 
has watched every single episode of this show. It's possible. I was thinking when we see them later in the next episode that like they were very comfortable on camera. She's yes. willing to open up her life her and talk parents, about her baby, you yeah. know, the sister. So I mean, she's also a lot younger, you know, like Bravo will do anything to hire younger young moms. Yes. yes. But I, I think that this illusion that I don't know what Giovanni is. I think that she had been gunning to get on this show. And I think her sister also loves the camera, mm. allegedly. Like, I, I don't want to, I don't want them to at me or anything. But I, I, I think that they like the cameras and I don't think they give a how they're coming off. I mean, it's a total possibility. I mean, look at like, that's I, my opinion. Yeah. I mean, look at the other housewives. I mean, this is their whole life. Like Jennifer in New Jersey. It's not like she happens to be featured on the show and she has this great life. Her life is the show. So, yes. I mean, people look at this yeah. as bigger than ever. Yeah. I mean, they have every motivation to want to lobby to be on the show together. It makes sense. Yeah. And I, to be honest, I like totally understand. It can be amazing for your brand and whatnot. I think it's a little bit odd. I I think I like that Bronwyn from OC kind of owned that she had seen the show and sees the show as a job. And that's like a controversial take, but right. like, I, don't, I don't, I don't love that personally, but me either. But at the same time, I also don't love when someone has clearly been a fan of the show, clearly watched every episode, allegedly, in my opinion, goes to watch what happens live, clearly watches Bravo, and then acts as if they're not privy to anything that has happened. Oh, yeah. in the I've, last I've two never seasons. seen the show. You know, I decided I never wanted to see yeah. it. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Who Please. goes to a job interview without reading about the company? Right. You just don't. Yeah. I mean, especially if you're gonna have these cameras in your home and your marriage with your kids. You're gonna be like, oh, you're just gonna sign on line on this line unseen. Please. Yeah. Yeah. I want to get back to the episode because we're sorry, at sorry, Clint- I, no, don't apologize. Attracted. We're at no. I like the insight because I have not looked at her Instagram. So I, I, was, I was interested to know, and I think many people haven't gone down that rabbit hole either. Um, where we left the Castle Hill Inn to go to Ramona's clam bake, which I have no idea where <laughs> this is. It's like in a field somewhere, and they like put up like a wedding tent. And apparently, this is a celebration of friendship, and that's why crowns are there. Oh God. I don't know why they have to have these themed dinners. I don't think it makes a difference. It's the same nonsense every single time they go out. Now, Luann makes Ramona doubt her decision to include Leah's sister. So now Ramona decides that she doesn't want to meet her. Leah's drinking and she needs, she asks for two shots because it's time. I liked that quote. She's like, I need two shots because it's time. Like no real reason why. Sure. <laughs> I like it. Um, <laughs> Ramona calls her, uh, meaning Leah, she was referring to Leah as a recovering alcoholic. This is not accurate. I agree. I also thought, because, I mean, I can't speak to that, but I do think that's a self-label, and I think it was inappropriate for Ramona to say that. Yeah. I mean, she hasn't gone through the steps. She did admit that she was an alcoholic, like, I, the, the relationship of alcohol on the show is growing tired for me. You know, Luann, I think she just knocked us over the head with it for years. And I, I just need a little distance between who is an alcoholic and who isn't. I agree. It's also getting a bit dark, just yes. to be honest. Um, that, that's how people view this episode. Some people did say it was just it was sad. It was dark. It, it wasn't as funny as people thought but i mean i i perceived it a little bit of a different way um, yeah and i can laugh at about it and stuff but at the same time it's interesting dorinda says that ramona is too quick to judge really really <laughs> dorinda that is so stupid i can't even give it any any life because we'll see what happens um at dinner ramona and sonia are basically plotting uh, in front of Leah, who is blackout, how they're going to get rid of the sister. Leah, um, this is this one was this part is hard to cover because 
Leah is, you know, she's totally drunk. She's one of those adult drunks that like nobody wants to take responsibility for because they're just acting like an animal. And Tinsley gets up and she approaches Dorinda for a hug in the middle of all of this, which goes nowhere. Um, Leah tries to take off a boot. At one point, she's walking around with no shoes. Sonia, Sonia drags her. Her legs are open. Leah is inebriated. Um, I, I mean, we could get. The, I wrote a lot of this down. We all know what happened, but you know, it's just crazy that Ramona took this as an opportunity to approach Leah to say, "Your sister, I just, I just, she's not coming." The worst yeah. timing ever. Yeah, and I actually, I have a sister who is close to my age. And Leah, I think her and her sister are like five or six years apart. But I would have been pissed if I asked for my sister to come. Someone said yes. Which, by the way, none of them are paying for this. So it's not as if you're asking, like infringing on someone's home or something. Right, it's not completely sponsored yeah. by yes. the, the the pocketbook of Ramona Singer. Yeah, yeah. So I like empathize with that because I thought if I had asked for my sister to come for whatever reason, and someone said yes, and then they retracted it, I would have been upset. Yeah, especially with like a family and the per- you know the person's on their way. It's it was. I mean, Ramona handles it so poorly, but she handles it as I would imagine she would. I'd be surprised if it was welcomed with open arms and handled. Back. Yes. Uh, meanwhile, Dorinda says, I eat what I think. And she's like, I like, I have no idea what she's talking about. Tinsley is begging for a hug from her, which is just like such a bad look. Nothing was accomplished from this. The timing was just terrible. Oh, I will say though, Great TV. You're looking at Leah ru- literally running around the table, almost tripping over the wait staff, pulling on the drapes of this tent. And then you've got Tinsley like begging for a hug in the middle. It's like, I don't even know where to look first. No, these women are amazing TV. It's no it's class, just, but amazing TV. It's also, it's think of the, even like looking back to college or something, the worst drunk night you've had, that's what it is every single episode. And somehow they fully recover <laughs> at the crack of dawn the next day. The crack of dawn, by the way. Yeah. Like doing I, yoga and stretching. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Nobody's like, I feel really sick or I need to stop doing this or, you know, I need to have like an IV or like, no, no yeah. not, nothing like that. Um, now there's a bunch of judgment coming. Luann says, have you ever seen me behave that way ever? Oh God. And of course it's like, yeah, here are the flashbacks. We all have seen you behave this way. Yeah. Do you really want to set yourself up for that? And there she is in the bushes once again. Um, Ramona had to go to the bathroom to think over if, her, if Leah's sister could come, then she came back on the third time. Now she can come. Now it's okay. After three oh. times, she had to take a special trip to the bathroom to be able to decide that she did the right thing. What an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but let's talk about the yeah. next the next day because um, Dorinda's on the beach. Uh, Leah is alive and feeling great. I mean, I wish. Yes, which was interesting. I, I would have been... I would have had such a moral hangover, but that's just me. I almost respect that she's like, I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, wouldn't you, I think most people listening would sit there and be like, oh my God, what did I say and do on camera last night? Like, They're, <laughs> yeah. ob- they're obviously going to use it. So it's like, for that alone, I'd be like, whoa, like, what did I, what did I do? Never mind. Like, I don't remember anything, but it feels great. Like that would not be my response. Yeah. And then she had some conflicting in the confessionals. She said she didn't remember. And then to Elise, the busybody, she said, I remember everything. Like, that's who I want to be. So which one is it? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, you've got Elise literally looking down on Leah. She's like three steps up. And she's like, 
Are you a little hungover? You were a little wasted last night, or was that just you? And of course, Leah is on the defensive from all of this. It, Leah, I mean, you know, this. I want to say Elise. Elise is like that person when you go out in a group of people and there's someone you don't know, and you've been out for like an hour or two, and finally it's like, I've, I've not acknowledged or really spoken to this person. Like, who are they? Like, uh, I don't know this person. Like, yeah, is it too no, late totally. in the night for me to introduce myself? Like, do I want to invest in this relationship? Like, that's how I feel as a viewer with Elise. Like, I don't know you. The show did a horrible job at introducing her. So Yeah, I, we don't know her. We don't know her. <laughs> And also, Elise would be my hungover worst nightmare, to be honest. Yeah. Even if I didn't throw tiki torches and do cartwheels, I just wouldn't want her near me if I was struggling with a hangover. She's so judgmental. You know, of course, she's the first one when they get in the cars one on one to talk about what was going on. You know, typical. She says that um, basically, she tells Leah, like, this is why you're alone. Like, who wants to hear She's that? also alone, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I mean, they even alluded to her having, like, a tough past with, like, men. So, oh, yeah, read read page six on her. That's Really? That'll kill a few hours. Oh, God, Elise. I don't know. I, <laughs> I, I don't... I don't know how to feel about her. I'm kind of like, I, am I invested in you? Do I need you on the show? How many more episodes are you going to be? Like, it really is like going out to dinner with people. It's like, hi... What's your story? Like, is it worth me getting in with you? Because I, I just, am I never going to see you again? Like, who is Elise? But um, Ramona uses the opportunity to judge. Dorinda doesn't like the judgments. What a hypocrite. I mean, you can't tell Dorinda. You can't do that. Yeah. And Dorinda is also bullies Tinsley. Well, that's it. That's all that she does. She's passed judgment every single week on Tinsley. It, it's, it's exhausting. So now Ramona yeah. can't judge Leah. There's a lot of hypocrisy on this show. So much. But you know what's so interesting is, or I don't know if it's interesting, but alcohol is how many housewives are there? It's the sixth housewife of New York City. So everything gets blurred. Where like you just walk away from it being like, oh my God, they're so drunk. Yeah, and luckily, We're though, like, for us, they're able to, like, quickly recover from these fights because it's yes. just because they were drinking. It's not something yeah. they carry for 23 weeks. Yeah, but even, like, looking at other housewife shows where you'll, like, look deeper into things that happen and stuff, or I will, I'm just like, they don't know what they're doing. Like, these, oh, yeah. they get up, excuse me. All the time. I mean, I'm I'm getting a little tired of it. I, I would like, like I've said this now for probably four or five weeks, I would like to see more of the city. Um, yes. You know, I mean, going away and drinking until you're blackout drunk, like we've, we've now witnessed that quite a bit, you know. And that throwaway scene in the next episode of with Luann talking about the cabaret is not what I'm talking about. I'm tired of that. Exactly. Where's our city? I, you love New York, too. It's funny that you say that because Ronnie Karam on Watch What Crappens will say, are they literally not allowed to film anywhere in New I, York City? I know. I, they're because li- they're never there. No, I will ever. get into it in the next episode, but like they have a yeah. tea party and like Ramon is like, like, I, like what, not Ramona, it's, uh, it's like in Dorinda's like model home in the, I don't know what it is. We'll, we'll talk about it. But um, I wanted to briefly close this episode with the shopping trip that they took. Elise then gets touchy feely and like tries to hug up on Leah, who like they clearly are not friends. It was very strange. Um, what she asks Leah, you know, what would you do if your twelve year old daughter was like you and got drunk? And she's like, That's so annoying, that's so inappropriate, that is so unnecessary. What does that have to do with anything? Yeah, super rude. Like, I, I don't, like, what do you even say to that? She was like, Leah didn't even know how to answer it. She was like, I'd say, good job, honey. Good job. Like, like what a dumb question. It's terrible. What else happens? Dorinda calls out Elise for, um, for uh, oh yeah, Dorinda hates Elise. Yeah. Yeah. For causing trouble. Uh, and Dorinda wants a judgment-free zone. Again, you're the last one to talk, miss. <laughs> 
like really the last one. You and Ramona have no legs to stand on when it comes to that. Ramona purposefully closes out Leah and Tinsley from the conversation, which drives me personally insane. That to me is so gross. Oh yeah. She she's the queen of cutting people out. Ugh. Um, whether it's photos, so conversations. Passive-aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Ramona wants Leah to apologize. I never like when grown people have to expect other people to apologize to them. It's it just never ends well because you'll never meet their expectations. And Leah somehow thinks that her behavior triggered Ramona's childhood, which oh, it God. didn't. But Ramona uses this as an opportunity to go all in that yes. Yes, uh, Leah did trigger her childhood with her alcoholic family. It had nothing to do with it. No, it didn't. And let's all remember when Ramona faked, uh, allegedly faked a nervous breakdown in the Berkshires and chartered some bootleg plane to go to some woman's party in the Hamptons and said it was because her it reminded her of her father and all this stuff. Like, give me a break. Oh. You're 63 years old. I mean, you do have to work through it at some point. And, you know, to put that on Leah, who Dorinda keeps reminding us is a single mother. I don't know what that really has to do with anything. I guess <laughs> yeah. it's like, you know, have some sympathy. But, um, you know, Ramona was wrong for that. But uh, she'll never apologize for it. And just judging by social media, it looks like Ramona is on the outs with, like, everyone. Except oh, yeah, probably they Sonya. really don't like her. I mean, it's it's bad. I mean, this is this season is Ramona on steroids, in my opinion. Yeah, and I kind of love it. I can't. I love that woman in a sick way. <laughs> I think we love her because we don't have to live with her. She's just on yes. our TV a handful of weeks a year. Like you know, she's there. We can turn her off. I I could not have someone like that in my life, though. She's definitely challenging. Yes. As she appears on TV. So this conversation all ends with to be continued. And uh, we're going to be picking right up next year uh, on a new episode with Catherine to talk about the episode that follows, which picks right up. And um, wow, we made it to almost almost 34 minutes. So we're doing good on all this. I'm glad. Yes. It's not exactly. We really th- we're concise. Yes. It's not exactly 30 minutes or less, but I think people will forgive the extra four minutes. So yes, they will. We'll be right back with the next episode. Make sure you check it out. This has been Grant's Rant Small Talk. Real Housewives of New York City Rundown. Want more? Join the full conversation on Grant's Rant's Hollywood Talk Podcast.